So a lot of times uh, runners get used to only moving the sagittal plane, right? And what that means is they're so used to moving that joint in this position, like they don't take care of that joint and moving that joint through its full range and its full capacity. So one of the things that happens to that joint, when I keep getting used to cranking, you know, in the sagittal plane, sagittal plane, sagittal plane, that capsule starts to get a little bit tighter and say, you know what, I don't need to move anywhere else in the transverse plane, the frontal plane. So I'm gonna get tighter and tighter. I'm gonna limit my ability to move and have a good, healthy, robust joint. In order to have that robust joint, it has to move all over the place. In order to sit into your squat, in order to sit into your deadlift, in order to skip, hop, run, jump, you have to have that, that range of motion in that joint. So just doing a self-assessment on what does your hip joint look like? Can I get into this 90-90 position where my uh, shin bone is even with my foot, right? And I'm posted up. Once I found a healthy place, and by the way, guys, this is like the norm. I should be able to post myself up in this position. I should be able to do all kinds of stuff from this position, not fall over and feel like, oh, if I'm falling over, I got an issue with my hip. So I really want to work on that hip mobility. So once I'm in this position, I, I want to make sure that here's my belly button, here's my hip, here's my pocket in my shorts, right? So I want to push my, my pocket all the way forward and all the way back. So I'm doing my own self hip scour. And where is the place that that joint feels the best? It's not going to be up here. That's at my end range. And it's not going to be back here. That's at my end range. Somewhere in the middle is that good spot where, man, that feels like it's deepest in the socket. And once I'm there, now I want to work on, oh, by the way, I can even find it from here, right? I can find that hip sweet spot from here. I can find it from the floor. So once I found it, now I'm going to work on, can I work on keeping everything else stable? I'm going to breathe with it. And I'm going to pull this thing up and work on open, 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 open. That is all I have right now. I am at my end range of my joint capsule. I'm going to hold it there. And I'm not holding with a, uh, I'm only holding with 20% effort. I can start to feel that cramp in that one of the deep hip rotators. You have six of them, like a rotator cuff. You have a rotator cuff for your hip too. And it's helping to pull my hip into external rotation. It's getting my brain used to owning that position. And then I'm going to slowly let it parachute down. Again, if I can't do that and it only goes to here and, oh, man, that's too painful, my regression is take it one layer down. Does that start to look better? I'm starting to free up space in the joint capsule. So now, okay, this starts to feel better. This is a little bit easier. I can still feel that hip working. I'm still working external rotation and then slow working down. That's external rotation for backside of that hip. I can even bias a little more external rotation. If I take a yoga block and I put it underneath my shin and ankle, now it's further into internal rotation. Now I'm going to work even more motion, right? Because I'm starting from a deficit. That starts to feel better, starts to look better, right? So you saw what it looked like before. I'm still working, still keeping my belly button facing you. I don't want to open up this way. I'm going to keep everything facing you at the same time. I'm still holding contraction, slow parachuting down. That's another way to work on if I don't have enough external rotation. Can I work on it creating a deficit? Yes, because you're teaching your brain something. So after you work on it for a while, Five reps, can I take that block away and does it start to look better? Does it look better than the first time? Slightly. Feels better to me. Does it look it's getting higher? Yeah, so now I've start to teach that joint capsule, hey, I got more range. Yeah. So we've done external rotation. Do I have enough internal rotation? Do I own that internal rotation? Can I do this? Can I hold it there with my brain and my nervous system? I'm getting tired, man. Ooh, it's already falling really fast, right? So I don't own enough of my internal rotation. So there's ways to work on it. I can actually work on it trying to work on oh, that internal rotation. Nothing else moves, right? All I'm doing is 
creating internal rotation actively. I can do it actively and passively first and then actively trying to hold it. But that's getting pretty tiring for me. So I want to use a block, right? So I'm going to take my block and you have three different levels of the block. Um, small, medium, large. Um, I like small. I'm going to start from there and I'm going to work active internal rotation. I'm going to hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, and breathe. And since I want to control it, I want to slowly parachute it down. I want to own that internal rotation. I want to work on can I create joint capsule space. That is huge for having a healthy joint in that hip and helping me with my knee, foot, and ankle. Again, I can even take it down if I'm like fatigued and go, oh, that's getting to be hard. Does that look better with internal rotation? Sure. That's an easier spot, right? So I can still work on the same thing with internal rotation. And that covers your external and internal rotation, hip mobility. Perfect. That's another great skill that we can use. Whew.